Hello, this is Nick Stewart and welcome to my life series uh, Deal Maker Nick uh, videos which goes through the story of my life and how they've impacted uh, what I do in business. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the first episode. The first episode is going to be my entry into the music business and really where I start from uh, the very beginning. Um, hope you find it exciting and interesting and um, look forward to taking you through my life. So first things first, I wanted to explain to you why uh, why I've done this or doing these videos. Um, the first thing is the same reason for the book. I wanted uh, my kids and family to be able to read all about what I did uh, through my life. Um, and obviously, uh, switching onto YouTube is a lot easier than uh, trying to order the book on Amazon, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it won't have the same detail, uh, but it should give people a pretty good feeling. And the other, And the other thing is, I wanted to share something about my life and uh, something that might be interesting for people that people could take uh, certain things from. Um, but I didn't just want to be another LinkedIn life coach. So um, in essence, uh, that's the reason uh, uh, for for doing this. And so the first the first episode really obviously starts at the very very beginning. Sort of, I'll, we'll start around 1978 when um, I got to live with my uh, dad in. Douglas Court in West End Lane, uh, which is in uh, West Hampstead and Kilburn, lovely part of the world. And um, yeah, it was always it was always my dream to live with my dad, and I got the opportunity uh, to do that. Um, and um, it was a great uh, a, a great thing, really. So the so the first thing I should start is my first ever real job. So my first ever real job was at uh, a place called Jumbo Tra Travel. 268 Kilburn High Road. I remember it very, very well. Um, it was run by a guy from an, in, an Indian, a, a guy of Indian descent and Pakistani descent um, working here. And they, most of their clients were Pakistan. And I had to do a lot of traveling on the train between there and um, Wembley, because in those days you had to be licensed to issue tickets, right? Um, so they 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 could book all the tickets, but they had to pick up physically pick up their tickets from their partner office or their partner friends in Wembley. So I believe they shared the commission, and uh, that's how they did it. Um, the other thing I remember at that time is it was very much uh, we also um, lived to what I next I called the IRA Church um, in Quex Road, uh, where you know on Sundays you would have the the IRA marches. And you said, and he had a big Protestant community as well. And I always remember there was a lady coming, came into the, uh, came into the shop and said, uh, "Well, look to Ireland. Why haven't you got any holidays to Northern Ireland?" Now, now you might want, actually want to go on holiday to Northern Ireland, but in those days it was a trouble torn. It was a bomb area. It was really not a, not a place you'd want to go. Um, but she got really, really upset and. Um, they had to call the police to actually remove her and after she decided to dismantle the shop because there were no holidays to uh the emerald isle uh sorry to the nor northern part of the emerald isle i uh you know uh carrick fergus belfast and so forth but anyway i i digress that was more or less um more or less my start i didn't do the job for very long uh for various reasons um, but it was a good, it was always, it's always, you always remember your first ever job, so to speak. Um, the second part, uh, the second important part is talking about my family. They were very much, uh, very well connected. They, you know, that even though I end up being in the music business, they were very much into music people. Uh, they were friends with, uh, with some of the whalers. Uh, they were even doing a project, uh, you know, trying to record an album together. They were trying, you know, there's many things they were trying to do. Um, and, he, and my father uh, lived in uh, in 14 Douglas Court, just as uh, uh, his brother did Nigel. It's a very big four or five bedroom apartment. And one time he threw this party for this, uh, um, uh, what I'm calling, a Japanese journalist who had, he wanted to film a punk rock party. And because we're all connected to that, it was no problem filling the rooms with uh, famous people. I, I can't remember exactly who was there. I think uh, maybe um, the Clash were there and some other some other punk groups, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
And it was a very, very interesting, a very, very interesting party. And I remember two things from that party. At this party was a guy called Johnny. And Johnny was a mind uh, primarily for gangsters and rock stars. And he, is, he, he was well known at that time. And he said to my dad, uh, thank you, Ian, for a lovely party, but I'm going to have to go now. And my dad, Ian, responded, Johnny, please don't leave on our account. And uh, Johnny turns around and says, if I stay, that guy's going to go through that window. And dad, in my typical, in his typical way, would say, well, if you have to go, Johnny, it's been lovely to see you. Uh, just an, uh, just one of those stories from that particular party. The other story I remember that party, I can't remember. It must have been about four or five in the morning, sitting at the end of my bed to, telling me her hard stories was this lovely lady, uh, young well, young girl who was dating the lead singer of Generation X, who, as you probably know, was uh, Billy Idol. So it was just really in, you know, in, in interesting just listening, you know, about her life and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I remember that all, you know, all pretty pretty well and um you know uh that was that was that then another story um at the other major part of my life as you uh, probably see when you read the book is liverpool football club liverpool was everything to me and i got the chance to actually meet the great bill shankley um and that happened i was actually playing in tennis and my next door neighbor was annie ross who was a very lovely lovely lady you'll probably remember her from superman uh she's primarily known as a jazz singer but she was also a very good actress she was a lovely lady um she arranged uh, she arranged to take me along to celebrity squares because scotland in 1978 were in the world cup uh world cup finals in argentina and they were doing a, a Celebrity Squares special edition send-off. For those of you who don't know Celebrity Squares, Celebrity Squares was like a game show where, a bit like noughts and crosses, where you had to get the X's and the noughts, and whoever got the, the X's and noughts in a row would win the competition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and I was dressed in my Liverpool kit, and I wanted to change. And I came back home to go with Annie to see um, to see Bill Shankly and um, the other the other stars that were there. And um, and it was uh, unfortunately I couldn't change because I was locked out of my house. So I ended up going in my Liverpool gear, and I was a bit, you know, I wanted to change and look smart. But actually, as it transpired, it wasn't it wasn't really a bad thing. Um, I got to um, I got to meet uh, Bill Shanks, and he saw me in my Liverpool gear. And actually, having my Liverpool gear on, he was actually much more keen to talk to. Me talk to a, a young kid at that stage and we had a nice conversation about uh, about football about liverpool i was very very a very very special moment for me and the great thing is because we we're in the the area where all the celebrities would you know backstage in in, in essence they can't they couldn't run anywhere right they everyone's in a everyone's in the same you know same meeting room so it was really really nice with him at that time was dennis law and dennis law was his um was good uh was his very good friend and he kept calling him dad now for those of you who like your football um it's really quite an interesting story i, I wonder why he called him dad but i didn't actually find out maybe for, till 30 years later in life when i was reading an art school on uh, i think it was liverpoolhistory.net i can't remember exactly what it was it was about um about how bill shankley plucked uh, dennis law out of the reserves of huddersfield and made it and basically gave him the break and as you all know he then went on to man city man united and torino and become became one of the world's greats but he was you know he who knows what would have happened if he'd continued to language in the reserves at huddersfield but obviously he felt he owed a debt of gratitude uh to bill shankley so the following day after that after i'd met, met all these really nice people um i went to the swiss cottage uh uh, holiday in just to try and meet the players and actually having breakfast there well again was Dennis Law and Bill Shankly so very interesting they were obviously very very close obviously Bill Shankly didn't live that many years after that um, but I'm pretty sure that uh, Dennis Law was obviously a very very close friend of the family and um, it was just a very interesting you know a very interesting insight into things so the uh, the other th the, the other thing that uh, came about from one of these parties was I actually got to meet a guy called Tony Calder, uh, who was the boyfriend of then uh, of Sheila Oldham, um, who was a very good friend of my dad, 
And at these parties, I would always talk about Liverpool Football Club and everyone would say, go away, son. Uh, I'm not interested in talking to you. And But TC, as he was known, he started talking to me and um, we had a very good conversation about football. He said, you know what, why don't we go and watch Queen's Park Rangers tomorrow? Um, come over to the house in Victoria and we'll go from there. And I said, yeah, I'd love to do that. And um, he was also, uh, his his girlfriend, Sheila, said, yeah, please come, Nick. It'd be, it'd be really good. He's been working very, very hard. It'd be good for him to go out and watch some football and have a break. It seems TC, along with quite a few uh, male counterparts in my life, seemed to want to be the father they thought my dad never was um, and take me under their, under their wing. Um, so we went to the football. We had a great, great, great time. Um, and I started going with him to watch football. He had, in essence, had three teams. Southampton, where he came from. Uh, Queen's Park Rangers, his local London team. And uh, you remember then in that team, that team was a pretty awesome team. It was had Don Givens, it had Stan Bowles, it had Jerry Francis, uh, was managed by Dave Sexton. So it's a pretty good team. And he was uh, a Brian Clough fan. Uh, he's just a big so Nottingham Forest fan. And we ended up going, uh, I think one game we got oh, arrived a bit late, but we saw Nottingham Forest beat Liverpool, unfortunately. And after that, he told me to come and work for my football ticket. And that, in essence, entered me into the music business. And um, I, so I started really, I, I, as anyone will tell you, just, just like Simon Cowell, um, I, as a gopher, I was just running around for him doing this and doing that. And then it progressed to, I was his assistant, so to speak. And um, what I learned from that whole esca escapade was I started to learn about the music business. I, and, you know, it was a pretty, it was a, a pretty, uh, what's the word I'm trying to look? Was it, well, there lots of skullduggery going on. At that time, I always remember one story from that time. Uh, a boss of a major record company uh, would, would actually manufacture an extra million records um, of a specific a major a, a artist album. And in essence, ship them out, out the back door, have the manufacturing paid for by the major record company, and then just sell them it, uh, and receive the money in his private account. And the only reason the artist managers didn't do anything about this is they were also on the take. And that's something I learned very, uh, you know, very early in the, in the days. And um, that was really my, you know, my first, you know, my first, first foray into the music business. And as you'll find in the next episode, um, the music business is a very, very interesting place to be. Uh, amazing lifestyle everything else I could ever wish for. Um, but um, there was also a second side to the music business. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the first episode. Uh, thanks ever so for, much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please hit a like button um, and please hit the, uh, the notification bell and subscribe to the video channel. Um, look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thanks for watching the video and please feel free to connect with me on my personal website, nickstuart.co. Really looking forward to hearing from you. Bye for now.